happy ho 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 holidays. <laughs>In case you missed our last video, we are back in Texas and we're currently at a super cute Airbnb about an hour away from San Antonio for our first ever Adventures of A Plus K company retreat. <laughs> I just love saying company retreat because this is the company. It's just us. It's just us <laughs> and Kona, but she doesn't really do much, but she's very, very cute. <laughs> but we had a bunch of expiring Airbnb credits and thought it would be nice to get a change of scenery so we could focus on a bunch of business related tasks that we just don't have time for on the road. So we rented this tiny house that is located on a gorgeous property full of trees and wildlife, including a black buck antelope and has a beautiful design inside, plus an amazing outdoor area with a grill, hot tub, soaking pool, and a fire pit. We basically spend our days having meetings and then end the night cooking delicious dinners and enjoying the outdoor space and relaxing, which has been a really nice way to unwind after this year. And speaking of this year, that's why we're filming this video to chat all about 2022. Y'all seem to really enjoy our recap video from last year, so we thought we'd film one from this year. And wow, what a year it has <laughs> been. We hit the road in mid-January from Austin, Texas and explored a bit of West Texas headed to southwest New Mexico and spent a few weeks in Arizona before spending a couple months exploring all over California from the San Diego area to Death Valley, back to the coast and then up to Northern California. From there, we went up the Oregon coast for a bit, hopped inland to visit Bend, checked out a new area of the Oregon and Washington coast and then crossed the border into Canada where we spent a couple weeks driving all around Vancouver Island and then tackling the beautiful drive up British Columbia and through the Yukon on the Alaska Highway, finally making it to our goal for the year, Alaska. We spent two and a half incredible months in Alaska before heading all the way up to the Arctic Ocean in Canada and then driving back down through the lower 48, visiting a few new states for us. All of this was over 30,000 miles and we visited 13 states with four of them being brand new for us, two countries including a Canadian province and two Canadian territories, 12 national parks with seven of them being new for us and slept in 163 different places. So as you can see, we did a lot this year and it was definitely the best year of our entire lives. We made so many incredible memories that we will cherish forever. And for the next part of this video, we're gonna try to narrow down all of the amazing places we visited to share with you our absolute favorites. However, before we get started, we wanted to note we're not including any spots from Alaska in this video. We just didn't think it was fair to all the other places we visited this year because we probably would have picked all of our answers from Alaska because it was definitely the highlight of our year. But we did make an entire recap video for Alaska, so to hear all about our favorite spots and tips for Alaska, check out that video, which we'll link to below. In typical A plus K recap fashion, we have not shared our answers with each other, so our answers will be a surprise for you as well as for each other. And for our first category, we have top three destinations. I will say, even not including Alaska, I found this to be so hard because we visited so many amazing places this year. We spent most of our year on the West Coast, which is our favorite part of the US, so it's just, it's just really, really hard There's to so narrow it to down. <laughs> but I did pick three, and they're not in any particular yeah, order. Um, this is just what came to mind first. But my number one is Vancouver Island. That was my number one. I knew, I knew, <laughs> I knew we'd have this one in common. Yeah. But yeah, Vancouver Island. It just, it just has it all. Oh, yeah. I think we said in our video, it kind of feels like they took the best parts of the Pacific Northwest and just put it all on one island. It has unique beaches, mountains, waterfalls, cool towns and cities. And even though we spent two weeks on Vancouver Island, we barely scratched the surface of everything it has to offer. Oh, yeah. One of the top things on my to-do list for when we go back is to go backpacking at Strathcona Provincial Park. That area was just so gorgeous. It was just too snowy when we went there. And we loved Vancouver Island so much that while we were there, we we're even Googling, how do you move to Canada yeah. as a US citizen? Yeah. Turns out it's very hard. Look for real estate. <laughs> yeah, we were like all in. We we're like, we're moving to Canada. <laughs> I just loved all the small towns, the beaches, like I, I surfed there, didn't go very well, but I did. <laughs> um, yeah, like that surf culture, laid back vibe. I love the uh, European like feel and culture of Victoria. It was, I love it there. Yeah. I can't get over this island. Everywhere we go just makes me happy. I, I just can't wipe the smile off my face. <laughs> my first answer or other answer, I guess I'm gonna stay in the PNW area is Oregon All as right. a destination. You picked a whole state. I picked a whole state, <laughs> yeah. I guess specifically where we went was Bend, Oregon. Had a blast there. There's so much hiking there, tons of good food. It's a cool little town. 
like all around the town is like different kind of high desert ecosystems. You got a little bit of desert over here. You know, you got tons of forest, volcanic, you know, prior volcanic activity. Again, amazing hikes, waterfalls, everything you want, snow stuff. Yeah, I loved it there. And then also in Oregon, the southern Oregon coast. Yeah. I mean, we had a really rainy time there, but it's so beautiful. It didn't dampen our spirits. Yeah, it's just so beautiful. It's a good one. Kind yeah, of a little, like a little pun hey. action. <laughs> Yeah, just Oregon is amazing. We love it there. Well, I do agree with that. I didn't pick that. <laughs> I, did, I will touch on it later, yeah. though. But I, my second answer was the Yukon as a whole. Mm -hmm. Did the Yukon? No. Really? No. I, I don't know. Uh, I had a, it's hard. Like we left out Alaska, and then a lot of the stuff around Alaska kind fits of felt in that like same Alaska. box. Yeah, I did so cheat a little bit on this. I one. did pick some spots from there, but I just didn't want to pick all my spots because again, yeah. I could have picked all my spots there. And I I couldn't not mention the Yukon yeah. because it is one of my favorite places I think I've ever been. It's a place that I never in my lifetime thought I would go to. Mm -hmm. You just don't hear much about it growing up in Texas. No one talks about going to the Yukon Territory, mm -hmm. but it's just so wild, vast, and remote. There are more moose than humans that live in the Yukon. It's just basically everywhere you go, there's just nature surrounding you. We could drive hours without seeing any civilization. It also has really cool history with all the Klondike Gold Rush history, which was super fun to learn about. And I especially in the Yukon loved Kluwani National Park, Tombstone Territorial Park, and then of course Dawson City, because it just felt like walking back in time. Yep. Ditto, all that. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have anything to add. That was it. She summed it up. <laughs> all right, my next pick, which is my last pick, is again I'm picking a giant region, but California. <laughs> Sorry. Mine's mine's also from California. Okay. But I specifically said the Central Coast of ah, California. That, that's one of the reasons why I picked California. But we just had a great time there. Loved eating all we could in San Diego and touring around the town a little bit. We drove Big Sur again. That was so much fun. Um, yeah, slow San Luis Obispo was so much fun. Loved that area. Um, and then also we went up to Redding and uh, went to Lassen National Park and Redding was just a big surprise and so much fun. So much to do there and it's just beautiful. It's just hard to be California. There's so much to see and do all it, over the state. It's one of the most diverse states. I mean, yeah. Death Valley, Joshua Tree, the coast, the mountains. Mm -hmm. There's so many parts we didn't go to because yeah. once again, it was too snowy that we are so excited to go back and hike and backpack one day in the mm -hmm. future in the summertime. But yeah, California, is incredible one of our favorite states for sure we and could spend the whole year out there yeah i mean <laughs> there's, there's so, so much, much to do, do that we haven't even done yet yeah so. but i specifically said the central coast of california which is the san luis obispo pismo beach montana de oro mm -hmm. state park morro bay big sur area that we went to i just loved the vibe of that area it has a very just like calming chill mm -hmm. beach vibe it's just I don't know, Some something about being there just makes me feel, once again, just very happy and just very content there. Mm -hmm. has a really cool mix of smaller cities and towns and beaches. There's mountains, there's valleys, there's these really cool cliffs. It's just... Gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. <laughs> it's my favorite part of the California coast, yeah. hands down. Next category, top three hikes. I had a really hard time narrowing down my top hikes here. We just did so many amazing hikes. Um, and again, these are in no particular order, but my first one is our backpacking trip in the Superstition Mountains in Arizona. Me too. <laughs> yeah, we, we, just, it was just, we just did one night out there, but we just had amazing sunset, amazing sunrise. The, I don't know, the rockiness and just the geology out in the Superstition Mountains is just a little different from just the regular desert scenery you would think of. You know, it's, it's a little more green, a little more... Yeah, kind of craggy. I wrote that too. Of. I go, it just feels different than many desert areas yeah. that we've been to. Mm -hmm. They're very unique mountains. Mm -hmm. They have interesting shapes. Yeah. The look is just different, but I don't know how to explain it. There's those really cool rock formations, like the Weaver's Needle yeah, yeah. that we, we camped. Got, yeah, right we got at. to camp right in front of that. It was, it was just beautiful. It was a hard trip, though, I will say. <laughs> so, you know, being in the desert, there's no water. So we had to carry all the water we needed for both ourselves and for Kona. And it wasn't even that hot. I think we went in February, but the, with the sun out, it feels so oh, much yeah. hotter. So we were just really thirsty the whole time. We really had to ration our water. We used way too much water to cook food. So that part was a struggle, but we learned a lot of lessons that would make us better desert backpackers mm -hmm. in the future. But yeah, that hike was definitely one of the most epic ones we did in the lower 48. Mm -hmm. My first one, and this is my number one because I 
I, I love this hike so much, but our hike at to Grizzly Lake at Tombstone Territory. Park. I almost Park. picked that one. So I know that kind of goes again with like the Yukon and Alaska, really close together. Not sure if this answer totally counts, but there's no way I could not mention this hike because it is one of the most gorgeous places that we have ever been. It has so many just jagged granite peaks, which are my favorite type of mountains. It has all this wide open tundra landscape where you can just see for miles. And we got to hike to an alpine lake. Plus, we went in the fall and the colors were just popping off. It was late August, so that's not what you think of when you think of the fall, but up there, that's the fall. And it was just gorgeous. It was so colorful. And even though the weather was kind of crappy, the first part of the hike, it cleared up and it was just unreal. It was a perfect day, really. It was yeah. just a perfect hike. It was amazing. This one, you already mentioned this place, but the hike we did at Kluwani National Park, yeah. the King's Throne Trail, this trail was extremely difficult. It was brutal. <laughs> yeah, it was brutal. And we didn't make it all the way to the end of the hike, but I mean, if you go out there, which it's a trek to get out there, obviously, but if you ever make it out there and you do this trail, just any, as far as you can get up the hill, up the mountain is going to be amazing because just get up above that lake just a little bit and your view is just amazing and it's just a beautiful national park yeah the mountains were so stunning out yeah. there and then that lake had like oh just crystal bright clear turquoise yeah. like edging on it mm -hmm. it was so beautiful we yeah. turned around because the weather yeah. we heard thunder we got really kind of nervous about that being above the tree line plus it was so just slick and steep yeah. i just think we were really tired there were a lot of factors that went into that decision mm -hmm. and we were really bummed about it but yeah like what like adam said what we got to see mm -hmm. was so worth it. <laughs> Alright, so my third one, I guess, and this is the one I struggled the most with because it's n I was struggling between picking the hikes that had the most epic view versus ones that were a more interesting hiking experience because sometimes you go on a hike and you're in the trees the whole time and it's kind of boring, but the end view is great, whereas other times you have pretty good scenery the whole time, maybe not the best of your life, but it's a really fun hike, there's unique features. So I leaned more into the unique features angle on this one and I picked the Condor Gulch High Peaks and Bear Gulch Loop at Pinnacles National Park. Pinnacles, I believe, is the smallest national park in California. It's located kind of in the Bay Area, so it's really convenient to get to. And I don't know, like that park was just a really nice surprise. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't really hear many people talking about it over the years. But this hike itself was just really beautiful. You kind of start out with just nice views of the mountains around and all the pinnacle rock formations. And then there's a section where you kind of climb along like these steep rock cliffs and they have these, these railings to help you. So I guess, you know, you don't fall and die. And some parts of it were like a little bit kind of scary or hairy, pretty narrow ledges there. But I thought it was so fun. There's all these steps put into the rock. And then you reach this reservoir which is a nice little water feature along the way and then probably my favorite part you get to crawl through a cave at the end mm -hmm. and when we went both of the caves were open that's not always the case and so we got to go in the cave that's not always open that was really tight and narrow we were crawling we got lost it was just a ton of fun <laughs> oh my gosh this is tight in here right. yeah you know, caves aren't always my favorite thing, but it was a ton of fun and just really fun. Experience. It was just different. Yeah. It was just different yeah. than any other hike. A lot of variety. Yeah. Yeah. All right, my last one again in California. I think I saw that, <laughs> and that's the one I almost picked. Really? I think I saw what you yeah. wrote. <laughs> yeah. So the Castle Crags yeah. hike near Redding, California. That's the one I went back and forth on. Yeah. Just this scenery on this hike just really blew me away. You can see Mount Shasta. There's forests, mountains as far as you can see, and other major mountains out there and then the rocks up at the top are just super jagged and you get to actually walk between them it was just a really unique and you know just amazing setting at the top of that hike it's so unexpected because once again we never heard many people talk about that part of california yeah. and it was stunning i almost picked that one because just the mountains are so jagged mm -hmm. and mount shasta like mount shasta is gorgeous just looks very similar to my favorite mountain of all time, Mount Rainier. So yeah, that was an incredible hike. So that was my honorable mention. <laughs> Next up, the top three things we ate. And y'all know we love to eat. So this was a hard category because we truly do love everything we eat. If we say we love it, we truly love it. And I know people don't always believe us that that's true or they don't understand how we could always be so happy with our food, but we spend hours researching places to eat, reading blogs, reading reviews, just trying to ensure that 
where we spend our money is going to be worth it for us and that we're going to enjoy it. So the level of quality for the places we eat is always very high. And everywhere we ate this year was so good that they're all like right there with each other. And it's so hard to figure out which ones kind of just went a little above mm -hmm. the others. But for my first one, I picked the pork belly taco and the queso at Cochinito Taqueria in Spokane, Washington. So good. I mean, that queso was one of the best ones I've ever had. And I am a self-proclaimed queso snob. I have very- Connoisseur. <laughs> Connoisseur. <laughs> we eat, you know, in Texas, queso is a very popular food item, and I have yet to find any that beat Torchy's Tacos queso, yeah. but that was the, the one that I have found that's come the closest to beating it. It was so good. And then that pork belly taco was heavenly. Yeah. I don't know what else to say besides it was heavenly. And it was a really cool spot too. That adds to it. You know, the vibe can make a big difference. And it was just a really neat spot. The aguas frescas we got were so good. So my number one food item that I had all this year is the pecanha sandwich from Dr. <laughs> Custom in at the Mother Road Market in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I was hoping you'd say that yeah, one. This sandwich, oh boy, man, it was on this delicious roll and they stacked so much meat on there. Oh man, it was so smoky, so tender. It was one of the best sandwiches I've ever had. I snuck a bite or two yeah. of that and it was very, Ooh, very, so very good. good. <laughs> very, very good. So my second one is Yaks on the Five near Redding, California. I got this, I think it was called the Garlic Obsession Burger or You're Gonna Breathe Garlic or I don't know, or garlic Keep the Vampires fire. Away or something, something <laughs> like that. It was basically a garlic burger and it was so strong with garlic it's that kind that just burns your tongue it's so garlicky I'm still smelling it <laughs> <laughs> yeah months later i cannot get rid of this garlic breath it was so strong but it was delicious the burger itself was just so good we also got the scott's tots which were these loaded tater tots with a funny name mm -hmm. and they were delicious as well the environment of the place was really cool you get to draw a name out of like a bucket and that's the name they call <laughs> when your order's ready. And what were we? Do you remember? Like Miss America. Miss America. <laughs> Miss America. Miss America. Miss America. She, sing she it, sang yeah. it over the intercom. It was just so funny. It was just such a cool spot. My number two, so my last, my next two picks are gonna be biased because it's what I like, but it's gonna be Little Miss Barbecue <laughs> in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. I had been wanting to try this place for a really long time and it lived up to all the hype. We of course got brisket and some ribs, but yeah, just the meat was perfectly smoked, perfectly delicious. I'm so glad we finally got to yeah. try it. My final one is a very recent one, Cafe Cacao in Oklahoma City. Yeah. We ate like kings and queens in Oklahoma oh my City. Gosh. That was one of our favorite food cities we've been to in a while. Everything we ate there was so, so good, mm -hmm. but this was just one of the best breakfast I've ever had in my entire life, especially because I normally can't eat a lot of breakfast items because of some dietary restrictions, even though I do cheat often. But breakfast is kind of a hard meal for me, but I was basically able to have this like Latin American feast for breakfast. We had tostadas, we had the most incredible pancakes we have ever had in our entire life. Oh my gosh. So fluffy, so dense, so sweet. They were straight up dessert. And we both ice had, cream on top. Oh, it was so, so good. We ate <laughs> yeah. that for a couple days as yeah. leftovers. <laughs> And then we both had these really delicious savory dishes and the gorgeous coffee mocktails. The vibe of the place is cool. The owner is incredibly nice. It was just mm, one of my favorite food experiences of the year, Heck for yeah. sure. All right, my last pick. I'm making a last minute adjustment here. Ooh. Yeah, because uh, I'm, yeah. So my pick, my last pick is gonna be uh, Muchachos. Oh yeah. Is that in Omaha? yeah. No, it's Lincoln. in Lincoln, Nebraska, yeah. The barbecue and the, there was amazing, and you know they also served coffee there. Yes. Which those two, as a combo, is the perfect combo for us. We love barbecue. We love coffee. And then they had a coffee that was a cereal milk oh, so latte. Good. Oh, so good. And then again the barbecue. We got uh like you got nachos right? Nachos. And then we got the macaroni and cheese with brisket on top, and they give you so much meat on both of those. And we got some tacos. Yeah. We feasted there again too. <laughs> we like to eat. <laughs> yeah. So was that not your answer? No, my other, my, my, what I wrote down was Miller's Smokehouse. Okay, house, similar vibe. Which like, was similar, yeah. At Miller's they have, you know, a, a great Texas barbecue, my favorite thing. But then they also have a really high quality specialty coffee bar right in there. Yeah, that was my pick, but I'm making a 
last minute switch. All right. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of similar. Both Very have coffee similar, yeah. and barbecue, so you really cannot go wrong. Yeah. Our favorite coffee shop. We drink a lot of delicious coffee. We love finding local coffee shops, local roasters. It's since we don't drink, it's kind of our equivalent of going to a brewery when we yeah. travel. <laughs> we just we love going to coffee shops. And one place stood out for many reasons for me, and that is Bugwood Coffee in Smithers, oh, British yeah. Columbia. Yeah. One best pumpkin spice latte I've ever had. Well, one of the best because we've had we had some really good ones after that one too. Mm -hmm. But one of the best pumpkin spice lattes, which is my favorite, just kind of sweet coffee drink, especially in the fall. And it just had the coolest vibe. It was this little kind of just outdoor stand. You walk up to it, you order, and then they had this really cool seating area. It was just a, it was just so different than any coffee shop we had been to. Plus, the town of Smithers is just so cute. We really loved it there. I'm still shaking off the fall vibes yeah. that just <laughs> overwhelmed me from that uh, pumpkin spice latte. Mm. I better go back to the van, put my flannels on, get my jeans on, put my my boots, my uh, what is happening? <laughs> My shin high boots, my vest, because it is fall. It is officially fall. Every sip is more like fall. Get the potpourri out, the Halloween candy. I can smell the turkey roasting. He can't stop. It's just, it's fall. It's official. Fall is in him now. <laughs> but my pick is also in Canada, and mine is the Cold Shoulder Cafe in Jordan River on Vancouver Island. Oh, yeah. Remember that place? Is that the one that we didn't mean to go to and then we went no, to? No, yeah, it was a last minute decision that morning, and... We drove by it on the way to where we were going. I think the um, one of the beaches over there, and uh, yeah, I don't totally remember the coffee. I know it was really good. I'm pretty sure I got an americano, but and it was very high quality. But the main reason I picked it is because of its location and just like the overall vibe of it. It sits right across the water. There's the ocean right there, and it's just like this little beach shack that they turned into a coffee shop. It's like the coastal version of Bugwood. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty it's much. It's like, just like kind of a hut. Yeah, yeah. I just yeah. love the vibe of it and the location and really good coffee. And, and just to give some behind the scenes insight, you know, we typically have a plan of where we want to go in every video because we've done a lot of research and, you know, we try to narrow it down. But that was a last minute decision. We yeah. turned around the van because we drove by it yeah. and we were like, that place, that place looks so one, cool. we're really tired, we need yeah. coffee. Two, that place looks so cool. Let's just go and get a quick coffee mm -hmm. and... It was amazing, and I'm so glad. And that's one of the best things about traveling is when you just stumble upon something that you didn't plan to go to, then it ends up being an awesome surprise. Best ice cream. We had so much amazing ice cream this year, but my favorite one was Coneflower Creamery <laughs> in Omaha, Nebraska. That's what I settled on to. Was it? But, uh, yeah, I went back and forth, and I've been telling Adam over the last week as we as we've been working on this independently, how stressed I was about the ice cream choice. He's like, why? And I'm like, because they were all so good and it's so hard to pick because once you reach a certain level of ice cream quality, mm -hmm. they all are equally good. Yeah. So I chose based off of the flavor as well as the ice cream quality. Like what flavor, like if I were to go buy a pint of any ice cream we had this year, what would I want? Mm -hmm. So that's why I picked cone flour. Yeah, I mean, the ice cream itself, you know, every flavor we tried was super high quality, but then the different specific flavors. I got two fruity flavors, which I normally don't get, but they were just so good. I remember that lemon bar one, which I can't remember if it was, it was auntie's grandma. or grandma's. <laughs> <It> was grandma. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it had little lemon pieces in there, and then also the little like lemon bar pieces, um, and then you had the butter... Butter brickle. Butter Wh brickle. Which is why I picked cone flour. Yeah. Because I loved the butter brickle. I just loved the toffee and the chocolate. And it was just so buttery, but a little crunchy. Mm -hmm. We got a pint of it to eat later. Yeah. It was real good. Yeah, that's our telltale sign of stamp of A plus K approval is if we go back in and buy a pint before we leave town. Which sometimes we don't just mm -hmm. because we don't want to eat ice cream every day. Yeah. Or we want to, we don't need to eat ice cream every yeah. day. So sometimes we don't. That doesn't mean yeah. we didn't love the place. No. But if we buy a pint, that means... We especially loved it. Yeah. But yeah, we went to so many awesome ice cream mm -hmm. shops. Boomtown and OKC mm -hmm. was so good. That Allison Braun place in Squamish was yeah. one I was also kind of mm -hmm. stuck between because it was such a unique experience where they make the ice cream in front of you. It's New Zealand real fruit style ice cream. Mm -hmm. So they blend the ice cream and the fruit. Kona said, Kona wanted us to tell you guys mm -hmm. that that was her favorite of the year because she got a scoop dog mm -hmm. there. So just so much incredible ice cream. I know I just named like three more because <laughs> I just can't pick, but yeah, you can't go wrong with any of them. Uh -huh.
Next category is our favorite city or town. I tried to think of this category as which city or town would I want to live in the most? And I had, I think, four total that I could definitely see us living in and enjoying, but I ultimately decided on Bend, Oregon. Mm -hmm. Bend is one of our favorite places. We had been there once before this visit and we've now been in the summertime and in the springtime. So we got to experience it kind of in two different seasons. And it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous place. It's the perfect size town for what we like or city. We just like that smaller, medium sized city. It has tons of outdoor recreation, gorgeous mountains. It has that high desert scenery Adam mentioned, beautiful rivers, amazing restaurants, coffee shops and gelato. And on this past trip, it was still snowy. So we got to snowshoe to a warming hut, which was a blast. And one of my favorite things that we did this year. And on a previous trip, it was the summertime. So you actually could go higher up into the mountains. And we hiked in the Cascades. And the hiking out there is just top notch. It's a place that I could see us going to many, many more times in the future, going backpacking. I just, I just love it there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could definitely live there for sure, obviously. Uh, but my pick, uh, I guess I might be maybe pick this... Um, as where I would have like the best day. I don't know, hmm. my perfect day. So I picked Pismo Beach, All right. which we mentioned earlier. <laughs> yeah. We mentioned earlier the it's in the San Luis Obispo Central Coast of California area. Um, and just like you said earlier, like that feeling you had there, I, I just felt like I belong there or something. I, I love the Pismo Pier. Uh, it had a huge beach. The Dinosaur Caves Park was so fun. Um, and I just think it would just be the perfect place to have the perfect day i could wake up in the morning and go surf i'm still not very good at it obviously <laughs> you've seen all my attempts um and then have some awesome food and then i can go play golf in the afternoon there's tons of golf courses around there yeah that's my perfect day. <laughs> <laughs> our top national park so as we mentioned earlier we went to 12 national parks this year with seven of them being new three of those were in alaska so those ones do not count so out of the four i guess remaining new mm -hmm. ones my favorite, hands down, was Channel Islands National really? Park. Really? All right. Not you? That's not my oh, pick. I thought we were going to have this yeah. one the same. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I guess I'll take it away then. <laughs> but it is just such a unique national park experience. First, you have to take a boat to get to it because they are islands. And the boat ride itself was so fun. We saw dolphins. We saw a whale or two. It was just a gorgeous boat ride that the boat ride alone would have still probably made me pick this national yeah. park as my favorite. It made us feel like we were back in Hawaii when we've been to Maui and done like whale watching tours. It just felt like that. And then the island itself, which I'll kind of talk more about that later, spoiler alert, but just being on the island was incredible. It's so beautiful. There are all the wildflowers, the island foxes, and we hiked across most of the island and we hardly, we didn't see anyone for the majority of the day. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly how I like my <laughs> national park experiences. My favorite national park of the year was Death Valley. Yep, yeah, that one's good too. Yeah, it, that was fun. It is the largest national park in the lower 48, and it just has amazing diversity in the in its landscapes. It has mountains, deserts, sand dunes, you know, crazy geologic formations, and there's even a waterfall in the park. And then if you go at certain times of the year, you can see snow, and then you can go down to the desert. It has the most dramatic vertical relief in America of over 11,000 feet. You have telescope peak and then you can look down into the Badwater Basin which is the lowest point in North America. And there's also lots of history there, ghost towns, fun gravel roads to drive in on. It, it had tons of fun stuff for me. Yeah, uh, we had the best time at that park. Well one of the best times. Channel Islands was, the, yeah. was my <laughs> best time but my second best time was Death Valley. That's the one I would have picked next because yeah it just felt like we were on another planet the whole time. It's mm -hmm. a very 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 special place. My honorable mention though was Lassen. We didn't get to do a ton there, but we knew of a lot of things to do there, but we couldn't do them because of the time of year. But it just kind of was like a mini Yellowstone with a lot of those geologic, geothermal is the right word, features. So can't wait to go back there. I know that when we get to go back to that park in the summertime and do all of the hikes that were closed because of the snow, mm -hmm. it will go up yeah. very high up on the list mm -hmm. of favorite national parks. It feels like a hidden gem. It's yeah. just nowhere near as popular as Yosemite or you know Yellowstone in Wyoming, but it has a lot of similar features and yeah, that It'll was, be fun. I can't wait. I cannot <laughs> wait to go back to that part of California. Our favorite place we slept. I have two answers for this Yeah, one. I have two as well. And I feel like we're going to have the same number one one, but I feel like we're cheating on that one <laughs> if we pick that. Um, and it's yeah. 
The salmon glacier? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's not cheating though, because technically it's not in Alaska. So the salmon glacier is that epic campsite we had on our way down from Alaska on the Cassier Highway where we had that glacier just out of our, our back windows. Mm -hmm. It was insane. It's one of the largest glaciers in Canada, I believe, and it's just unreal. It was the most gorgeous scenery to have outside of our van. I don't think anything will ever top that. The journey to get to it's a bit rough. It's kind of a rough road, but if you're willing to make the drive, even just to go see it mm -hmm. for a day, it's incredible. But so you get to it through Hyder, Alaska, but it's mm -hmm. technically in Canada, yeah. so I think it counts, but I did have a second answer too because the more the merrier. Yeah. <laughs> my uh, my other one that uh, isn't, you know, definitely not accessible, very accessible and not, um, hmm. uh, it's just it's just really cool to be able to say you're there, I guess, is at the Arctic Ocean, sleeping with the Arctic Ocean right outside your window again. How many times can you say that? Something I never thought I'd say until recently, sleeping with the Arctic Ocean outside my back window. But my real pick is definitely much more accessible and you can definitely get there is the TV Tower Road yeah. in San Luis yeah. Obispo. We had an amazing time up there. There's cell service. We had this uh, uh, cloud inversion a couple of times we were up there and ridiculous sunsets and it just never was really that busy for even being the only boondocking spot really in the area and yeah it was yeah locals would come out intense. to watch the sunset but then pretty much everyone would leave we had one night where we i think we had a handful of neighbors mm -hmm. we were up there off and on for like over a week it was just insane you have the valley below you have the mountains around you have the ocean you can see all the moros yeah. it's just the most sweeping view and it's free yeah. so i mean you can't beat that but even if we had to pay i'd pay for that view yeah we will say though that boondocking spot is not meant for rvs like big rvs no. or trailers it is a very narrow windy road to get up there yeah. not a ton of space once you're up there so we would not advise it for something larger than our van it also may not be great for tents because it's super windy up mm. there. So I know a lot of people complain on the different apps about how windy it is. It definitely was shaking the van at night, mm -hmm. but for us, that view, especially with how hard it is to find free camping in on the California coast, that view was more than worth some wind. <laughs> and if you go up there, just like any other, you know, free or any Anywhere. place you want to sleep, yeah. it just respected because again like i said it's one of the few boondocking spots out there and it's an amazing spot that we want to keep you know open and available to anyone who wants to visit it so yeah just take care of it we did see a lot of trash uh, a, lot a lot of broken, broken glass, glass yeah. which is really disappointing so please. i think it's like a hangout spot for some local like kids too. There, remember that one day when <laughs> it was like saint patrick's day weekend yeah. and all the college kids came out to party it was there was a loud. DJ up there, wasn't yeah, there? Yeah, I, I don't or know. Somebody it was, was so blasting loud. music in their car or something. It, there were a lot of college kids yeah. partying. It was super yeah. loud. I'm not going to lie. We were very annoyed. There was Just a lot like, of noise pollution. But yeah. At least they, I don't think they trashed it. Yeah, I mean, they were having tell. a good time. Yeah. Good for them. But we were trying to work, and we were just like, when will this end? This has yeah. been going on for five hours. And then the cops came. Yeah. We did not call the cops, no, just to make didn't. that clear in case no. any of them are watching. Yeah. But the cops came and cleared them out. Mm. So besides that, it was very peaceful yeah. up there. <laughs> Our top three experiences. Hands down, my top three experiences of the year were driving up the Alaska Highway, driving up the Dempster Highway to the Arctic Ocean where we saw the Northern Lights for the first time and got in the Arctic Ocean, Ooh. as well as seeing a brown bear catch and eat salmon, oh which was just like National Geographic. Yeah. It was one of the most spectacular things I've ever seen. And while none of those, well, Technically, the bear was in Alaska. While those were not really in Alaska, we didn't cover them in our Alaska recap. I still don't want to make those my final answers because it just, like we said earlier, it doesn't feel fair to compare everything to that because how do you compare with seeing a bear eat salmon yeah. or seeing the Northern Lights? You just can't compare with that. Yeah. So instead, I wanted to mention those <laughs> as my true, my true answers, but I also have three answers that are from the lower 48. So my first one is backpacking on the Channel Islands. Mm -hmm. which That's I, one of mine I, Yeah, well. I felt like That's we were why. both gonna... Yeah, <laughs> I wanted to include it twice in this video because I just love the Channel Islands so much. And I put this under the experiences section versus the hiking section because it was a whole experience mm -hmm. doing that trip. From the boat ride, like I mentioned earlier, to backpacking across the island, camping 
in different campsites as well as doing day hikes. Like that whole trip was just an experience. It was so fun. It was one of my favorite things we've done in the U.S. It was amazing. It was. You have to do it. Even yeah. just go camp there for a night yeah. at the one campsite that's just about a quarter mile walk. Scorpion Ranch or Scorpion, Scorpion Cove Campground. Canyon, yeah, something like that. It. <laughs> If you can go just camp there for a night so you have more time on the island, highly recommend it. My other top experience, one of them, is learning to surf. Woo! So this I was year. hoping you'd yeah, do that. Yeah, so I took a lesson in California, uh, in Ventura, California, and I had one of the, I couldn't have asked for a better instructor, and I actually got up a couple times on the board, and it was just so much fun. In my mind, as you're on the board, you know, standing on it, you feel like you're ripping through the waves, and then you go back and watch the footage, and it's very... <laughs> slow and not that impressive but hey i did i it. was impressed yeah um, and then i also got to surf in tofino on vancouver island and that one did not go as well but it was still a huge learning uh experience i would really like to make surfing a big part of my life one day it's kind of tough just we're not always by the coast but i had a blast and i'd love to do it more but i'm glad i finally got to learn to do it and do it a couple times in 2022. I, I had so much joy watching you surf, mm -hmm. especially when you like were actually shred, shredding, yeah. shredding <laughs> on the waves yeah. and just the smile on your face. Yeah. It made me so happy. Mm -hmm. so my second one is tanking in Nebraska. Mm, that's my other one. <laughs> okay, I was hoping you'd say it because we just had way too much fun out there in that stock tank. Mm -hmm. So tanking is this Nebraska thing where you float down a river in a stock tank mm -hmm. and it is just so fun. You, you're spinning around. In our case, we ran into some trees. Which was hilarious. We were just bouncing off the <laughs> banks. <laughs> you know, we didn't really paddle much. We just kind of enjoyed it as a yeah. relaxing experience until you hit a tree that's mm -hmm. less relaxing. <laughs> but it was just a blast. It's such a simple activity, but it brought us so much joy, mm -hmm. so many laughs. This is the funnest thing I have done in a long time. <laughs> and we were the only ones out there because we went at a weird time of year in October. Yeah. Only ones out there, it was just so fun. But during the summer, it is popping off. It's the, the little rivers are packed with people and I can see why. It would be so fun on a nice warm day to get in the water and then float down the river with a bunch of your friends in a stock tank. That'd be, I could yeah. do it all day. And then jump in the river, yeah. like, it would be so fun. Mm -hmm. So right, you're done, right? Uh, well, so I had, Pick tanking, but then I also wanted to mention um, whitewater rafting in Spokane. Yeah. I almost picked that one as well. Yeah, that was also a blast. And in the same category, doing yeah. stuff on the water. That was so much fun. Yeah, Got to had... ride the bull. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that rafting experience was also just brought out so many giggles. Yeah. And that's how you know when we're having a good time is when Adam is like, ho, 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 yeah. and I'm like, hee, hee. <laughs> We kind of talked about the Redding area earlier in this video. It's in Northern California. It was such a surprise. The town itself is that really good small medium size that we like. There's mountains around, there's rivers, there's Mount Shasta, there's lakes, there's waterfalls. And one thing that we did there that was so much fun is we went on e-bikes on the Sacramento River National Recreation Trail, which basically took us from right in town all the way to the Shasta Dam where we had views of Mount Shasta, we had views of a lake, just views of all the mountains around, and it was just so much fun. We got to ride through a tunnel, go over a cool bridge, go up and down a bunch of hills, and the scenery, even though that area had been impacted by wildfires a while back, was still so gorgeous. Dwayne, back at the shop, he said he has toothbrushes for people when they come back because they're smiling so much that he's got to get the bugs off their teeth. <laughs> I can't wipe the smile on my face, but no <laughs> bugs. No bugs. Bugs all hit my forehead, though. <laughs> And our final category, best surprise. I'm very curious what you're gonna pick. <laughs> I think you're gonna know mine, because I've said it about a yeah, thousand curious times. Yeah, I'm curious what yours is too. <laughs> I've said it about a thousand times. <laughs> but I'm very curious what you're gonna say. All right, my best surprise of the year was Nebraska. Mine's very, very similar. Mine was Oklahoma. Mm, okay. <laughs> what I loved about Nebraska specifically was the Panhandle area. There's uh, Scotts Bluff, Fort Robinson State Park, Chimney Rock. Um, nice little towns and then also we drove pretty much the whole drive of the Sand Hills Scenic Byway which was just a gorgeous area um, and then again like we mentioned earlier we tanked there that was so much fun and then also cool more of their major towns are on the east side so Omaha and Lincoln really loved exploring those what we got to see delicious food the panhandle region especially is not mm -hmm. what you think of no. this is what we thought of when we thought of nebraska oh it, in the toadstool area oh the hoop yeah toadstool the, geological yeah, park, yeah yeah the badlands they had there mm -hmm. it was 
just unlike what we thought Nebraska was. It was a complete surprise. Yeah, and I'm also, just remembering this, I've really been hankering for a runs of <laughs> <laughs> Those, those runs so good. <laughs> those runs were surprisingly good. Yeah. So that also yeah, fits. Exactly. So ever since we went to Oklahoma, I've constantly just said out loud and to our videos just how much I've been surprised by Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. I should have saw that coming. Yeah, yeah, we grew up in Texas. The state below Oklahoma never went to Oklahoma. Honestly, never had a desire to go to Oklahoma. Didn't know what there was to do in Oklahoma. And it just blew me away. I mean, the cities are just so cool. And you can tell they're just getting cooler. You can just see that there's a lot of growth in both Tulsa and Oklahoma City. They just have some really trendy areas. And we didn't get to explore that much of Tulsa, but what we got to see in Oklahoma City, we explored a lot there. And like we said earlier, the food was delicious areas were all super cool they had some really unique activities and I was just super impressed by both of those cities plus driving on route 66 in Oklahoma is a ton of fun and takes you through some of the smaller towns which are also really neat but what really tipped it over the edge for me was the nature mm -hmm. growing up I thought Oklahoma was flat and a few years ago I started to learn more about the nature in Oklahoma and I was like what <laughs> but seeing it for yourself is something else yeah. The Wichita Mountains are those really cool, just deserty mountains. Some amazing sunrises and sunsets. Yeah. Plus you get to see bison, which is always fun. The Washita Mountains were so green and lush, and we got to go during the fall foliage, which just kind of reminded us, like I said in the video, of Skyline Drive or driving the Kank. I mean, the mountains are smaller, but they're still mountains, and there's kind of like the layers of mountains. It's just not ever what I thought I'd see in Oklahoma, and it was such a beautiful drive. And then you also have the waterfalls and rivers at Turner Falls and Beaver Bend State Park, which is an area that we would love to go camping in. And it's not that far from where we live no. here in Texas. So we have no excuse yeah. not to go back. I just loved Oklahoma. Maybe it's because we just it's the most recent place we went. But I don't think that's why. I think I just truly loved it. And it was further proof that, there may, and same with Nebraska, there are states that you may not be like, I can't wait to go to Nebraska. But... <laughs> There's cool stuff everywhere. Every state has cool stuff. You just have to open your mind, for sure. you know, look for th cool things to do and you will find it. Mm -hmm. And both of those states were amazing surprises this year. We had so much fun on our drive home because we were going to places that just completely blew our minds around every single corner. 100%. So you may be wondering what our plans are for 2023 and we have quite a bit in store. Instead of doing one big journey like we did this year with getting to Alaska, instead we're going to be doing at least five separate series, is what we're going to call them, both here in the U.S. and abroad. So our current plan is to spend the first four months of the year going on some flying trips, both in the U.S. as well as to at least two other countries, which we are so stoked about. And then around May until probably Thanksgiving time, we're going to hit the road again full time in the van with the goal of not only finishing up our final seven states here in the U.S., but also visiting a brand new part of Canada. So if you have any suggestions for our final seven states, please let us know. Since plans can change and we want to keep y'all on your toes a bit, that way you stick around to see what we're up to, we're not going to share much more than that, but it's going to be an amazing year with a mix of U.S. and international adventures, which is how we plan to travel moving forward. And as much as we love living in the van and we especially love having Kona with us, and we are very sad that she will not be able to join us on the international adventures, we are so excited to experience new foods, cultures, languages, and just be completely out of our comfort zone. But before we start really thinking about 2023, we want to say a huge thank you to all of you for all the love and support you showed as we journeyed to and around Alaska. We could not have done all this without you. We won't have a video for at least two more weeks because we're kind of in a travel transition period right now and we're focusing on some other things. But we'll see you soon and we can't wait to kick off 2023. But before you go, since y'all loved it so much in last year's video, stick around for another few minutes for a blooper reel from 2022. <laughs> Oh god. Oh my god. <laughs> my heart is beating so fast. That scared the crap out of me. Are your pants okay? I think so. <laughs> Lacona shake. Lacona shake. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that too. These are creepy looking women. Look at her. Their lips move. I love tea. 
I love tea too. Mm, it's I love quite delicious. I love tea even more. I know I love it the most. In, staring into my soul. I love tea the most. No, I too. <laughs> We're both really loving our looks today. I've got this uh, bonnet look going on. <laughs> little Adam on the prairie. Yeah. <laughs> little Adam in the saguaros. Yeah. They call me a little squirt gun. Trying to get rid of this farmer stand. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> Farmer Adam with his bonnet. You should have worn your bonnet. <laughs> yeah. Don't mind my large pizza. <laughs> Is that your pizza or are you just excited to see me? <laughs> a little bit of both. <laughs> San Diego, German for Wales. Oh, oh, no. oh no. no! Don't drop them. Come here, little guy. <gasps> That's a grayling. <gasps> oh no! So close. <laughs> Whoa, we're halfway there. Whoa! But are they pillowy on the inside? They gotta know. They have to know. The people have to know. We have to let them know. Oh no, what is happening? <laughs> Instant pot fail. <laughs> this has never happened. <laughs> it looks like a geyser in here. It still is. Oh my God. I'm coming through the path. It's just me, I won't hurt you, don't hurt me, la da da. Boop, 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 boop. This is how I scare away bears. I'm the king of the world! <laughs> <laughs> the way the reflection is, it makes it look like Adam's wearing a Speedo. Ooh, maybe I am. <laughs> <laughs> We're watching This Is Us! <laughs> I just realized I've had my pants on backwards the whole day. <laughs> I was like, these just don't feel like they're supposed to. We came to a place called the Happy Burrow Chili and Beer, and as the name implies, they serve chili <laughs> and beer. <laughs> and they have fun hungry cats that'll hop right on the table with you. <laughs> it's a small little bar there. <laughs> I've named the cat Chili, and Chili really likes my strings on my jacket. <laughs> This is one of the best days we've had in a while. <laughs> Non-stop smiles. <laughs> Hi guys. You guys are so Hello. nice and so calm and so sweet and so fluffy and I love you. And you can apparently adopt one of these burrows. So with we might be coming home with we? a cat. We might be coming home with a cat and a burrow. Yes. <laughs> in the van. Kona would be so mad. <laughs> Do the tunnel thing. Oh, we're doing the tunnel! In the tunnel! Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yay! Yay! Okay, stop. <laughs> now you're embarrassing me. video without dancing, did you?